On today's show, we've got a cool Mopar mashup, two six-second GTRs, and an airbag that looks like a catcher's mitt. We'll also be talking to Rutledge Wood about racing. I'm Andrew Collins, and this is Haggerty's Daily Driver. First up, Hemi Auto Works and Ellsworth Racing have released renderings of their 2020 SEMA car dubbed Highway Star. As first reported by Motor One, it's a 1970 Challenger body mounted to a Viper frame powered by a Hellcat engine. It's basically a Mopar turducken. <laughs> Do all the parts bolt right up? Of course not. The frame had to be stretched 13 inches and the body was a rusted out rescue before being widened 1.5 inches. Covering the Hellcat supercharger requires a custom hood. This won't be a trailer queen either. Ellsworth plans to run the car at several events around the US. That explains the planned six-point cage and lightweight windows. As of now, SEMA is still a go, so hopefully we can see this purple highway eater in person. Moving on, the Sydney Dragway in Australia just reopened, and local Matuks Racing came out swinging. They brought three cars to the drag strip and broke three records. As reported by Drag News, Matuks was boosting engines and taking names. First, their R32 Skyline race car ran the quarter mile at 6.472 seconds at 219.94 miles per hour. That's apparently good enough to make it the quickest GTR ever and maybe the quickest all-wheel drive vehicle. Now get this, their pro street car, it ran a 6.840 at 209.2 miles an hour. That's a car with a full interior and license plates that runs sixes. That's crazy. Lastly, their wheelie happy Nissan powered Holden Commodore went through the traps at 223 miles per hour. It set the record for the fastest vehicle powered by a Nissan RB engine on earth. Bravo Matuk's racing. Moving on, airbags have been around for a long time, but Acura thinks it can still be better. The safety engineers at Acura's Ohio facility have designed a new airbag that they say improves safety in both head on and lateral collisions. It's a three-chamber design with a piece of fabric across the middle that acts sort of like a catcher's mitt. In a crash, you make contact with the fabric first, which pulls the chambers around your head. It's like a hug that happens really fast. Acura says this helps minimize your head from turning or even sliding off the airbag entirely. It's clever stuff. The new airbag will come standard on the 2021 Acura TLX, but we expect it to appear on other models soon. Coming up, if you've watched any automotive television in the last five years, you've probably seen his work. This guy is everywhere. What began with the career as a NASCAR reporter has led to hosting shows all over the automotive media landscape. He's a former Top Gear USA host who now lends his talents to both Netflix and NBC Sports. And he has a garage you wouldn't believe. It's everyone's favorite car guy, Rutledge Wood. But first... Come see the classic MGB or the equally classic MG Midget, and you could win a mint condition 1948 MG TC worth $17,000. There's nothing to buy. Just pick up an entry blank and official rules at your participating MG dealer. Rutledge, thank you so much for joining us today. Of course, we are here to talk racing, but we can't ignore what happened over the weekend. NASCAR was rained out at Talladega, but then yesterday afternoon, a noose was found in Bubba Wallace's garage. What do you know? What I know is that right now, it's such a, a hard time to physically be in the garage that it's a real limited number of people that could have done this. And I'm really proud of NASCAR being vocal uh, about it, about the situation. Um, and they're going to find out who did this. And, and to be honest, um, these kinds of things are punishable uh, under hate laws. And I hope that that's exactly what happens because there's no room for it in the sport. You've been in motorsports a long time. I think it's safe to say none of us have seen a year like 2020 on so many levels. Uh, what do you think this year will be remembered for in motorsports? You know what? I hope that this is a year that people remember is coming together. I think this is one of those changes that a few weeks ago when Bubba Wallace ran the Black Lives Matter car, I think there were a lot of people who at that time were still shouting all lives matter didn't understand what was going on. I think in this moment, so many of those people now realize, oh, this is a lot bigger than I thought. And, and Bubba is such an incredible guy who has always been filled with love and hope and determination. And any way you cut it, whoever did this doesn't love themselves because you can't 
if you don't love yourself, you certainly can't love somebody else. And, and that's where this hate comes from. So I hope that this continues to be what people rally around. Uh, because when you look at the support that, that he's getting from not only the world and fans, but other professional athletes, we're going forward. And, uh, and I'm so glad that we're going to leave uh, hate and the Confederate flag and all this other crap behind us. 2020 has also seen a lot of racing, but online. So how did you feel about seeing drivers jump into iRacing? I gotta be honest, man, it's way hard. It's way different. And I, I think it's been really cool to see. I love what the group iRacing as a whole has done and, and seeing buddies um, like Dale Earnhardt Jr. Um, go with them to, to older tracks and, and spend time like they did at North Wilkesboro to give people this sort of updated look at racing history. I think is super cool, super unique. Uh, you know, my friends at Dinner with Racers, the series that they've put on through iRacing has been so fun. When you see, you know, stadium super trucks race at Belle Isle, yeah. it just puts a smile <laughs> on your face. So I know a lot of us grew up with Mario Kart and F-Zero, but I'm <laughs> happy for the next generation that has iRacing and all the other great racing games. I mean, Forza, um, uh, that other one that I've Gran Turismo. <laughs> There's a lot of good ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So many good, you know, but it's, it's way cool. Glad to see it. <laughs> right on. Well, let's switch from racing over to street cars because you have a very diverse interest in cars yourself. You've owned a lot of them over the years. Tell me about some of your weird stuff, old and new. Oh, wow. Because um, <laughs> kind of, I, I, you know, anytime I chose a car on Top Gear, it took people a while to realize like that was actually me. That wasn't a producer. I like weird stuff. So, uh, right now, probably the weirdest thing in my collection is my uh, Japanese K-Van. I have a 1991 oh. Suzuki Every, <laughs> which awesome. I don't know, is about the size of a golf cart with a 660cc right. turbo five-speed all-wheel drive. It's so much fun. It's my kid's favorite because it's like driving a big stereo around. <laughs> but I also was lucky enough this past year to build an RWB 9-11, which is something I've always dreamed of doing since the first time I, I read about them cool. in Zero to 60 magazine. And it's got an LS3 in the back. Oh, damn. Uh, 525 horse from Summit Racing. So it's funny because it's all of these different things kind of put together. You know, it's a Japanese uh, reimagination of a German car with American hot rod in it. So I, right. I, I think I, a little bit of everything. I'm just glad that Haggerty will ensure all this <laughs> like they should send me thank you notes in the mail right i'm sure they appreciate the plug yeah we were talking about the uh the that mopar turducken earlier uh <laughs> the purple one for sema so that's kind of another your rw your porsche is kind of a similar in a similar vein how long do you keep a car for is there a certain amount of time before you move on to the next thing or does it kind of vary yeah, it kind of depends you know like i love to build them i've always been a huge toyota guy um and I built this amazing supercharged Tundra and I thought I would never sell it. And then the guy who ended up with the Toyota Camry that I built for SEMA <laughs> in 2018 right. sent me a message one day and says, hey, I'm, I want to buy that Tundra. And I was like, oh, we'll see. Um, I, I don't really want to sell it. And he kept sending me messages. And so I sold it uh, last month and I miss it. I missed it so much that I wouldn't say goodbye to the truck when he was coming to get it. I just <laughs> acted like it wasn't happening because <laughs> You know, you put like a little bit of your heart and soul into these vehicles. And so oh, it yeah. all kind of, it all kind of depends, but like the RWB I love, but I also realize I can't bring all three of my daughters with me. So it's not as valuable to me as something like the K-Van or I've got an 84 Toyota van wagon, which we call the rad van. That Very thing cool. is ridiculous. It makes no sense as a vehicle. It's got a 90 horsepower four cylinder which was the same engine they were using in forklifts at the time but it we've nicknamed it tanya the vanya it has a hula girl on the dash we call tanya and it it just puts a smile on your face so i realize like weird is different to everybody but you gotta have stuff that puts a smile on your face so it really just depends you know it could be a year it could be a lifetime you never know yeah totally and i've, I've come to notice that it, it, what a car is worth monetarily does not always align with what it's worth to to the owner so i think i totally track with that uh, Absolutely. but we're 
You also have to be able to sell stuff. And I'm yeah, right. <laughs> you can blink and put way more money into something than it's actually worth. Yeah, that happens too. <laughs> but you have a show out now that's not about cars, surprisingly. Uh, it's called The Floor is Lava, which is a great name. Uh, tell us about it. The Floor is Lava is a super fun family show that just came out on Netflix this weekend. Uh, and it's kind of like Legends of the Hidden Temple meets Wipeout. It is a okay. crazy thing where uh, these teams are competing for $10,000. And it's all these different rooms in like my secret house somewhere that looks incredible. And the floor is lava. It's something that we used right. to play as kids. But it's so fun to see families watch together. People that have watched me on Top Gear and NASCAR can now watch the show with their kids. And everyone gets it because it is totally dad pun heavy and we didn't know that at first we did the first two shows as if they were going to be for you and me <laughs> so like, i announced the planet uranus the way that we all used to and then they came back and said hey you have to change a few things and make it better for everyone so i get so many so many funny texts from my friends They're like dude did you pronounce it uranus and i said that's, <laughs> that's technically the correct way i agree but nonetheless so finally, what's the next race we'll see you at? Well, I'm going to be at the Brickyard for NASCAR and NBC. We get to come back. You know, the schedules still are kind of evolving and changing. Right. Uh, certainly different as a person who spends so much time with race fans at races. Uh, but I might get the chance to actually show people that I pay attention the whole time uh, when we're there. So it could be kind of interesting. But, yeah, I'll be at the Brickyard for Indy uh, coming up in a couple weeks, and then I'll be at Texas Motor Speedway after that. And there will be fans there, so we're excited about that, but still want everybody to take care of themselves. Let's get this thing out of here, and let's get back to racing full time. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us, Relage. Really appreciate it. Uh, that's all for today, but I'll be here all week bringing you the car news. Until then, keep driving.